be the Holy Trinity <coughs> and the undivided unity. We will praise and glorify him because he hath showed his mercy upon us. O Lord, our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. <coughs> as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. praise and glorify him because he has showed his mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hid cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make for thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, <clears throat> and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. thee. Glory be to God on high, and on earth, earth peace, goodwill towards men. <clears throat> we praise thee, we bless, we bless thee, thee, we, we worship, worship thee. thee, we glorify thee, we give, give thanks to thee, thee for thy great glory. O Lord, Lord God, heavenly King, King God, God the, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty 
be an everlasting God, thus given unto us thy servant's grace. By the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty, to worship the unity. We beseech thee, if thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith, and evermore defend us from all adversities, who livest and reignest one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the Revelation of St. John the Divine, beginning with the first verse. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne <clears throat> were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes before and behind. And the first was like a lion, and the second like a calf, and the third had a face of a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Hearing of the epistle. Thanks be to God. Blessed art thou, O Lord, which beholdest the great deep, and sitteth upon the cherubim. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and above all to be praised and glorified forever.
be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel from the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning with the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Praise be to thee, O Christ. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. 
and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It has been said that Trinity Sunday is unique in that it's the only day of the year which is devoted to a doctrine of the faith rather than to uh, something else such as an important historical event from Scripture. And I'm not entirely sure that's true, actually. I, I, I think it's more a summary of everything uh, that we have emphasized each Sunday since the first Sunday of Advent. And I'll explain that, of course, because that's what I'm about to do, is preach this sermon. The choice for the Gospel reading is, as I understand it, older than the setting apart of this Sunday as Trinity Sunday. And the reading, of course, is that very famous passage where Jesus speaks to Nicodemus. And it has a very, very famous passage to, about being born again, born of the Spirit, which means born from above. An implication of what that means actually would be uh, well described as Father Patrick Henry Reardon uh, pointed out once in an article, and I thought this was very helpful, uh, of a conductor saying to an orchestra, okay, take it from the top. That's really the implication of being born from above. You're starting all over again from the very beginning, taking it from the top. Born again, born from above. What Jesus says there is that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ex or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless your whole life takes it from the top, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he says, except a man be born of water and the, of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, when I say that Trinity Sunday is a summary of pretty much everything that we have been looking at since Advent, here's what I mean. I mean that it's only at this point in the church year when God has acted and manifested his, himself in his saving acts that we come to Trinity Sunday because we are following Pentecost. You're going to have to stay with me now. You're going to have to pay attention to get anything out of this. There were certain loose ends in the Old Testament I've mentioned before, such as the foretelling of a new covenant that never, that never is established in the Old Testament scriptures. Well, another one of those loose ends is that God in the Old Testament is both one and he is plural. We are told in Deuteronomy 6, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echod. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And the word for one is that word, Echod. So God is Echod. He is one. There's only one God. But the Hebrew word that is often translated God with a capital G is also, depending on the context, often translated plural, gods with a small g. And that's the word Elohim. Elohim is, in fact, a plural word and it is constantly used, including in the very first verse of Scripture. 
Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamaim vetharetz. Elohim is the first thing God is called. Well, this is a loose end. He's one, he's echod. He's plural, he is Elohim. Now I'm going to say that this remains a mystery only to those who cannot fall into the full revelation of what we see in the New Testament. We see Jesus in the last several weeks we've been reading from the final discourse in John's gospel before his, his death where he says after he has died, he will rise again and they will see him and they, their sorrow will be turned into joy. And then he says, I'll send another comforter or another parakletos, another advocate. As I said last week, the emphasis on, in comforter should be in the second syllable. Fort, fortify, strengthen this other one who is like himself. At one point in John's gospel, Jesus said, I proceed and come forth from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And that sounds like it is redundant. It is not. When he says, I proceed and come forth from God, he's telling us who he is in eternity, one with the Father. And then he, when he says, neither came I of myself, but he sent me, now he's talking about his human nature, his coming into the world as a human being. So these things are, it's not a redundant statement. They're not, the two things that are not the same. He's the only one who ever came into the world. He said, I, you are from beneath, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. I didn't come into the world. You didn't come into the world. We originated here. We are of this earth and of this created cosmos. But Jesus came into it because he is not created. He is one with the Father. He is God. And so when he says, I'll send another parakletos, another comforter, another advocate, it's one like himself, for he says of him as well, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, even the Spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, whom I will send unto you. Again, do you see how that mirrors what he said about himself? I proceed and come forth from God, neither came of myself, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And then he says, the other comforter, even the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, that's who he is. He's one with the Father and therefore one with the Son who says, whom I will send unto you. So there we have this revelation of the Trinity that didn't come from a theology professor with a chalkboard putting up some complicated uh, theological formula that is something akin to what a physicist would put on a chalkboard. And that's not what happened. And that's why this gospel today, even if it had been chosen before this day was designated as Trinity Sunday, is so relevant. Except the man's whole life takes it from the top. Unless you are born from above, born again. You can't see the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God, Jesus isn't saying except a man be born again, he can't go to heaven when he dies. That's not what that's saying. That's the way people interpret it through, the, oh, through a Sunday school lens, I suppose. But no, no, no. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is already here. It was manifested in the incarnation when one who proceeds and comes forth from God came as well because he was sent from the Father and the Word was made flesh. And so we see this first comforter or advocate or paracletos who establishes that new covenant. 
by being the one who is fully human as well as fully divine, dying for your sins and mine and for the sins of the whole world, rising again to grant us eternal life, appearing to witnesses and proving that he's risen from the dead, not just resuscitated from death, but risen from the very state of mortality itself to liberate us from sin and death fully. And upon ascending to the Father's right hand, he has shed forth this, which you now see and hear, the manifestation of the Spirit given to each one severally as he will. Just as on the day of Pentecost, when they saw the tongues of flame over the heads of the disciples, having heard the rushing mighty wind that filled all the place, the manifestation of the Spirit, the other parakletos. And now God has revealed the doctrine or the truth of the Trinity, as I say, not by an abstract formula, but by coming to us. The Father has sent the Son, so God has invaded his fallen creation to save it. God has sent the Holy Spirit so that the church picks up where Jesus has left us the commission, having gone to the Father's right hand. Now the church is that incarnate word in the sense that the church is now the body of Christ in the earth, strictly because the Holy Spirit is present and makes us the body of Christ so that his incarnation is extended through his body, the church. And if you don't see that his kingdom is in the world already, oh yes, it'll come in fullness later when Christ returns to judge the quick and the dead. But if you don't see now the kingdom of God, well, either you haven't been born from above, or if you have, it's time to open your eyes and see it. The kingdom of God is within you. The Holy Spirit is within you, bringing that kingdom and making you the agent of that kingdom. The great loose ends, the establishment of the new covenant and the night in which Christ was betrayed and the day that followed and then three days later, the when he rose again, all of that establishment of the true Passover and the new covenant was the manifestation of God's kingdom to be seen in the earth, seen and heard, visible, experienced. That which we've seen and heard in our hands and hand concerning the word of life for the life was manifested. We have seen and declare unto you that you may have fellowship with us, says St. John. And then the kingdom of God is also seen visibly as the other comforter is inhabiting the body of Christ in this earth, the church, to do the will of God and to bring the truth of salvation everywhere, to break every yoke with true power of the Spirit. And that is why it was only after he rose from the dead that he could fully reveal the name of God when giving us our commission. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. And that name has been revealed to us by the wonderful saving acts of God that we have celebrated this so far, this church year, since the very first Sunday in Advent. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed as is most justly due. All my majesty, dominion, power, and glory, henceforth world without end.